This is a short video on the four kinds of laxatives, the four types of laxatives. They're listed across the left there. We have the bulk forming agents, the hyperosmotic agents, the stool softeners, and the stimulant agents. And on the right here, we have a picture of the gut of the GI tract. And it's just important to emphasize that laxatives primarily work on the large intestine, the colon, and the preceding small intestine. So this is kind of the mechanism, this is kind of where these drugs have their mechanism of action. And we're gonna be talking about four different types and giving you some examples. So let's begin with the bulk forming agents. Bulk forming agents, as we previously mentioned, work in the small and large intestine. They resist enzymatic digestion. So humans do not have the enzymes require, required to digest these bulk forming agents. They therefore increase the stool volume. If you eat them and you can't digest them to absorb them, you're going to have more poop. So they're going to increase the stool volume and bacterial mass because the bacterial grows in the GI tract there. They thus absorb water. And the main bulk forming agent that we're talking about is fiber, insoluble fiber. Now fiber comes from plant-based foods. As you can see, there's legumes there on the right image. Polycarbophil is a drug that you can take. It's, it's based on fiber. It's a bulk forming agent. Another one is methyl cellulose and there's psyllium as well. So these are all drugs that in the small and large intestine resist enzymatic digestion and thus increase the stool volume and the bacterial mass. And because they absorb water, they allow stools to pass through more easily. Next, we have the hyperosmotic agents. Hyperosmotic agents work in the colon. They retain water there by creating an osmotic pressure. So these are osmoles, so they, so they dissolve in the fluid. They're osmoles that create an osmotic pressure and cannot be transported into the body. They're in the GI tract, but they're not really in the body because they haven't passed through those epithelial cells. So they create an osmotic pressure and they draw water out into the lumen that is the GI tract. There are a couple subcategories of these hyperosmotic agents. Some of them are saline agents like magnesium, cit uh, magnesium citrate and sodium phosphate. Some of them are sugars like lactulose, PEG, and sorbitol. PEG is polyethylene glycol. It's a, it's a polymer. It's used in a lot of drugs. It's insoluble. It's, and sorbitol is a, uh, it's a, it's a sugar that's used as an artificial sweetener in some candies. So some of those act as hyperosmotic agents that are laxatives that, that cause you uh, to have to use restroom. There's also alcohols like glycerin as an example of a hyperosmotic agent. Next we have the stool softeners. Now, stool softeners allow water and fats to be added to stools and they soften the stools, thus making the passage through the small and large intestines easier. Some examples of stool softeners are docusate, which lowers the surface tension of stool, and mineral oil, which is minimally digested and does what it says above. It allows water and fats to be added to the stools, softens it, and allows it to pass through. It's oil. It's like greasing up your stool so that it passes through and prevents you from being constipated. And lastly, we have stimulant agents, which essentially stimulate peristaltic action, which means that they act on the intestinal mucosa and or the nerve plexi. The exact mechanism of action of these stimulant agents isn't very clear. We just know that they increase the peristalsis that's going on in the GI tract. Some examples of stimulant agents that are worth knowing are senoglycoside and bisacodyl. Both of these are drugs that stimulate the nerves in the GI tract to increase peristalsis and pass the stool through your colon. This has been a short video on laxatives and the different types of laxatives. I hope it was helpful.